What's going on? Jeff Coke here, and um, I want to talk about something called driving blind, all right? I want to talk about something called driving blind. If you see it behind me, that's the fog, right? Check this out. Now, if you look in front of me, this is literally like fog going on as I'm driving into the office this morning. You can see, literally, you can only see a couple feet. It was a lot worse a couple minutes ago, okay? So, um, let me talk about something, okay, about driving blind. Right? So many times, now I, I decided to talk about this, right? Because yesterday I was on a uh, long call, right? With uh, uh, one of my guys, we're doing a little bit of an acquisition, trying to find some uh, real estate investment deals, right? Trying to go after, and uh, we're implementing a couple of new strategies, right? So new strategies we're implementing, we're testing. Now, one of the things about this testing stuff is, uh, the question is, are you truly driving blind, right? Are you truly driving blind? Now, what does that really mean in terms of like life, in terms of how you live your life, how uh, much success, what the eyes of society say, hey, what is success? You know, is it money? Is it health? Is it wealth? Is it relationship? Is it the family, the legacy? What is it, right? And a lot of this stuff, Tony Robbins said it best if he didn't, Clearly, he said it because I said it. It says, uh, "Is success leaves clues?" Okay, and there's literally frameworks of it, right? There's footprints, so you don't have to drive blind. Now, many times as we're operating this thing called life, okay, we are driving blind like this, right? Blind as in, yeah, I know sort of where I'm going because I've driven this street to my office uh, many times, so I know where I'm going. Right, But if I did not know where I'm going, and if I did not know that, hey, this freeway that I'm on right now, we're going in a downgrade, I don't know exactly where we're going, it's going to be a little bit, tad bit more scary. So how many times have we gone through this where um, in, in life where we're trying to always continuously trying to see the full staircase, right? Trying to understand everything before we take the first step or everything before we hop in the car, turn on the engine and try to go to the next thing or next destination that we're trying to get to. Right, so I thought it was interesting because as I'm driving, um, as I'm driving, I saw this. So this morning, and let me tell you a quick story, okay? Is because this morning um, I went to my regular routine. I went to a coffee bean, and at this coffee bean, there is this young girl that works there. Okay, carries herself very well. All right, now I didn't know how old she was, right? Until like a couple weeks ago, I asked, and I magically found out that she is uh, actually in uh, high school. So I was like, whoa, this is crazy because I go in like sometimes like at five o'clock in the morning and then she's there working, right? So I'm just like, dude, like how are you like in high school and working here this early? You just work here part time and do you get off and then do you go do that? She goes, no, I do go to high school, but I, I go to school from home, right? So she only has to go to class like twice a week or something like that. So I was like, oh, that's super cool. So as I start asking more questions, right, I start finding uh, finding out a little bit about her and I tend to do that with a lot of the workers there, right? Like I know everyone that kind of work uh, works there because it's my routine and I know them. So her, she said that she wants to learn law. And I was like, oh, cool, like law. And I said, what, like from like Harvard Law or something? And then she goes, yeah, I wish. But she said it sarcastically, but I wasn't sure she was saying it sarcastically, right? So fast forward time to today, this day of gloominess, this day of as I'm driving into the office being all foggy, right? Um, I asked her about that. I said, so how's school going? Aren't you about to finish uh, soon? Because, you know, she said she was a senior, right? She said, yeah, you're going to start Harvard, right? And then she was like, no, I didn't never said that. And I was like, really? So now I knew immediately that she uh, uh, that she was like kind of being sarcastic, right, before. Uh, didn't dawn on me, right? Sometimes I'm very bad at picking up those cues. And uh, and then I said, so, so what are you planning to do? And then she was like, trade school. I was like, oh, trade school? And she went on to explain why she wanted to go on, go to a trade school. So I said, why do you want to go to a trade school, right? Because I obviously I asked that question. And then she says that she wants to do something called audio technician. But I was just like, you know, tell me more. Like, what is it in layman terms? Like, you know, hey, what is audio technician? And she's like, oh yeah, musician, studio, uh, editing, and things like that. And so I said, so why do you want to do that? 
so were you just kidding about kind of like the lost stuff? She's like, no, I want to learn about that. So I was like, yeah, so, so what are you trying to do? And then clearly there was people behind us, right? Like kind of waiting, but I'm trying to like, because I'm genuinely curious, right? About a lot of stuff. So she goes on and says, yeah, I want to open up my own studio because there's a lot of producers um, and I might be paraphrasing, but she says there's a lot of people who uh, work with artists that don't have the ear, right? For music. And then I was just like thinking for a minute, right? Like, I'm just like, that doesn't make sense. Like, you know, like I was just like, people who typically represents like musicians and stuff, they should have the ear for music. I was just like, they should. I don't know if they do or not, right? Cause I'm not, I'm not a, like a mu musically inclined, right? Like, you know, um, they should, right? And I was just like, musicians, if they're any good, they should have a ear for music. I was just like, right? So I'm, this, this is what I'm thinking, right? And I have to stop myself. Right? Here's what I mean when I, when I say I have to stop myself is that how many times have we, uh, you know, tried to listen to something or, or try to guess what people are going to say, but already in your mind, you've already made up the decision in your mind on what it is. Right? And a lot of times people who have like a strong, deep personality type, right? They run into, into issues of that, right? Because you're so trained, especially like strong salespeople, right? You're already conditioned to like literally lead the direction of what people are going to say. So you're kind of like, oh crap, like I already know what the person going to say ahead of time. So like you kind of like are clocked out. Right? So how many times, so I caught myself doing that and I was just like, I need to stop. I need to try to understand why she's saying what she's saying. Maybe I can learn something here, right? So as I did that, what I learned was literally that moment in time, right? That moment in time, okay? Like, I did a video a couple uh, weeks ago about a book that I'm rereading again, right? It's called, it's called Power of Habits, right? And habits, um, and the author in there talks about uh, habits, Charlie's the author, I believe, um, talks about habits as some type of cue, some type of re, uh, response and a reward, right? Cue, response, reward, right? Cue, response, reward, and that's the kind of the loop of a habit. And I'm rereading that because I know, I know damn well that I have some good habits, I have some great habits, and I have some really garbage habits, and we're all human, so we have all this stuff, and sometimes, and majority of the time, some of the things that are great habits can be really, really bad and detrimental to, to other parts of your life, right? It's like one of those things, right? Like, I've had a especially with my health right I've had conversations with a good friend of mine mine his name is Josh he runs a podcast called wellness force highly recommend for you to check it out and a lot with my health situation I have conversations with him about what are the cues what are the rewards uh, what are the triggers and the rewards that that is causing me uh, to stay in this unhealthy health loop that I'm in right versus like other parts of like business and life it's it's, it's like really easy for me to do certain things right um, so, so I have this conversation. So as I'm talking to this girl, I'm just like, okay, what was my cue? Right? The cue is I asked genuinely curious. I asked a question. She said something that I was somewhat sort of already knew what it was. And then the reward in my brain was saying, oh, shit, I already know what you're going to say. And already in my brain, my brain is going as a businessman. That's the idea. Right? And I was just like, I need to stop that. Right? I need to stop that. Right, because because you don't want to be that person that's a dream killer, right? And especially if she's young, she has these ideas and ambitions to do stuff. I'm more cognitively aware of not killing the dreams, right? Like there's a lot of times where where like people come to me for like marketing advice, right, or even business advice, how to make money. And sometimes I catch myself because of the experience. It's a direct reflection of who I am, and I have to catch myself and be like, look, I don't want to impose my ideas and my failures or my even my successes, I'd rather impose my successes to that person, but not my failures, right? And I have to catch myself to stop that, right? And even if you have the successes, right, you don't want to give kind of the detailed advice of those success sometimes because it might sway that individuals to not take a leap of faith, or in this case, drive blindly into the fog, uh, drive blindly without seeing where the road is going to take you. And so uh, as I'm at the office, I'll, I'll bring it in kind of full circle.
Uh, my mentor told me this all the time. You, you either fly with the eagles or you walk with the turkeys, right? He would say that. Jeffy boy, you either fly with the eagles or you walk with the turkeys, right? And he would be like, gobble, 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 gobble. Like, literally, you would make sound effects like that, like that, right? Um, and he would be like, you're a turkey, right? And I'm like 19, 20 years old, right? And you're like, you're a turkey, you know? Start flying with the eagles, you know? And it's like, eagles don't hang out with turkeys. And he would say stuff like that. He's all like, gobble, 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 you know? Like, like And I needed that, right? Because I was an arrogant, pompous know it all and I needed someone to like punch me in my face um, about that stuff right so he would say literally stuff like that now he has passed on but the point of this is, is this is it's so true right like like a smart man like there's another saying where they say a, a smart man does what a smart man learns from his mistake right like an idiot won't learn from his mistake and continuously make the same mistake over and over and over and over and over and over right but a smart man does what learn from his mistake Right, and it's an old cliche saying that we're taught, and I don't know even who brought this up or who even said this, or or maybe it was someone that that made a lot of mistakes, and they were just like, ah, oh, yeah, I kept on learning from my mistakes, right? And then they made it sound like it was a cool thing to learn from your mistake. But the truth be told, right, that the reality is this, right? A smart man, or in this case, right, an idiot will never learn from his mistake, right? But I rather turn it instead of a smart man, an average man will learn from his mistake and never make that mistake. I'm I'm sorry, an average man will learn from that mistakes and make the adjustments so they won't make the mistake next time, right? But a wise man, right? A wise man will learn from that smart man and never make that mistake ever. Okay? Never make that mistake ever. Think about that, right? Would you rather have, right? Would you rather have a doctor, right? If they're a neurosurgeon, something's wrong, got cancer or something like that, you're going to operation room, right? Would you rather have a smart doctor? Right, that's blowing around and says, "Hey, by the way, I learn. I learned from my mistakes. You know, it's okay. I've learned from my mistakes. Blah 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 blah." And 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 you know, you look at the track record and you'd be like, "Oh my gosh, this person killed X amount of people." But then they say, "Hey, by the way, I learned from my mistakes." And you want that person operating in your head, right? I wouldn't personally, right? I'd rather have a wise neurosurgeon, right, that has never made a mistake, has a clean record, right, and says, "Hey, I'm wise because I've learned from those idiots that have killed me." And so as we're going through life, as we're going through this, right, like, like, you don't need to see the whole road to keep on driving and get to your destination where you need to get to, to right? Like just like the smog that's always uh, going through. But the navigation that you listen to, right, the, the directions that you're getting. Try to listen to a wise man versus a smart or average man that learns from their mistake. Learn from a wise man that never made that mistake. And those types of individuals are very, very hard to find. And if you do, right, and you got to have that in like different parts of your life, right? Like fitness, you got to have that in like spirituality, you got to have that in uh, career wise, right? You got to have that in uh, even just simply uh, the ability to learn, right? Like it's kind of like the three pillars, right? Like three pillars of success, in my opinion, which is what you got to have a game plan uh, to learn, right? That's number one, like you have to have a growth mentality, and you have to have a really, really good game plan for that. The next one is career wise, right? Or finance or business wise. And then and then you have the other one is wealth management, right? Um, or, or wealth management, right? And career and life or whatever, it's kind of like all, all ties into three, right? So you got to have all of those three. So, so the point of this, I'm telling you this is as I'm here, I got to get to the office and get to get to work here is be a wise man, and learn from a smart man and never make the mistake. Because mistakes are really costly, ladies and gentlemen. It really is. All right, that's all I got. Love y'all. Take care, everybody.